Thank you so much for such a lovely introduction. And I want to thank the um, Bamboo Society of India and the Council of Architecture for inviting me to speak. I'm honored. It's it's just really wonderful to be able to present my work um, halfway across the world. Um, so I'm going to share a slide presentation and um, in order to tell my story. And um, uh, I'm gonna tell a little bit about my background and then get into um, the artwork. So I grew up in the desert and during the summers, my parents would drop us off at my grandparents' house. My grandfather was a flower farmer and we spent our days in blackberry fields and flower fields, examining the um, nature really close. So I really had um, a love of nature from a very young age. This is my mom's work. Uh, I worked in her studio as an assistant every once in a while when I was a kid and I got some hands-on experience. The thing that my mom taught me was self-discipline in creating works and how to pay attention to details. Uh, her work is highly crafted. This is a glass studio made out of glass. When I first started making sculpture, I was making sculpture out of natural materials that I could gather off of the ground. I would look at the innate patterns within them and see how I could build a structure out of them. So this is, um, these are maple seeds. They're a type of tree that grows here and the seeds fall to the ground. They sort of whirl down and I gathered them all and created this sort of seed pod shape out of those tree seeds. When I was in graduate school, I'd been working with plants for about um, uh, I don't know, nine, 10 years at that point. And um, I was invited to go see a bamboo grove. And while I um, I was interested in other plant materials. I was also looking for materials that had more structure to them. So I went to this garden with um, a fellow gardener and we walked through a forest and we came to this bamboo grove. And I was immediately awestruck by how gorgeous it was. The tall vertical combs, the horizontal branches, the interspersed nodes, and um, the way it sort of gently moved back and forth, it looked to me like a living, breathing tapestry and it was so alive. I started to have images flood to my head and I felt like the bamboo was talking to me. I um, immediately got the feeling that there was something really important here and that I had a lot of work to do. And so I took it back to my studio and for a year and a half, I experimented with it. At the time, the, um, it was 1999 at that point and the internet as we know it did not exist. So the information I could glean from bamboo at that point came out of two books, one about architecture and within it, it referenced bamboo and rattan being used together to make um, scaffolding in China and bamboo fishing poles. So um, within that year and a half, by tearing apart the bamboo and putting it back together in all sorts of experimental ways, I came up with about six different techniques that I still use today in my work. And I'm going to go through what those are. This is one of the pieces from that year and a half where I was exploring bamboo on my own. Um, it's 2,000 pieces of bamboo that were split and sanded and drilled and then sewn together to create this suit of armor that, that one could wear while riding on a horse because it had a split skirt. And it is in a collection in um, the middle of the country at this point. This is um, a picture of Bamboo Garden in North Plains, Oregon. 
after I um, finished graduate school, I moved across the country to Oregon, where I live now. And I was introduced to um, someone who became a very significant person in my life, Ned Jakewith, who owned Bamboo Garden Nursery in North Plains, Oregon. And he taught me everything I know about bamboo as a living, growing plant. Um, he gave me access to bamboo materials um, by inviting me to the farm and letting me collect from his burn pile first and then later on from the bamboo groves. And um, when we passed away, uh, when he passed away, the, um, the Bamboo Society of the Pacific Northwest created, along with some other friends, created the Ned Jakewith Foundation to preserve and promote um, the education of bamboo. Um, you can find more out about that on the web, but um, Ned was a great influence. And so was Jiro Yanazawa, who is the bam a Japanese trained bamboo master um, who lived here in uh, Oregon when I moved here and he taught me how to split bamboo and several other techniques that I incorporated with what I already knew. I'm really grateful to his, him and the experiences that he gave me. He lives back in Japan now and I got to go visit him a few couple of years ago with his wife. So I'm going to talk about my techniques, materials and tools. I gather my bamboo um, from all over Oregon and I bring it back to my studio and I wash it down to take the dirt off. And then I slowly roast it over a propane burner to remove the oil from it. And then there's a couple different directions I might go with it. I can cut it on a bandsaw um, down into smaller pieces. And if I'm going to do that, um, it will go straight into an oven to be um, to be heated to remove the oils rather than long poles over an open flame. This is a piece that's created with small pieces that were put into an oven um, called House of Ishi. I made back this back in 2003. And um, so this is one of the techniques that I created when I was in graduate school that I call my stacking technique. And there's two different forms of it. There's flat stack made by splitting bamboo and then this round stack. The other thing I'll do is I'll split bamboo with the traditional splitting knife and then I'll remove the skin. Uh, and this, this technique, I split the, the bamboo pole into about 16 pieces. And then I'll split the skin away from the inside, which is called tangential splitting. And then I'll take the bamboo strips through two knives to make each piece the same width. And then another planer knife, which makes each strip the same thickness. Those can then be put a bent around a mold of some sort. Here I'm using a tin can and heating it up with a heat gun. And this is the sort of thing that I'll, that I could create, or one of the techniques that I came up with, which I called spiraling. And um, it has all sorts of variations that I do. Another way that I'll heat bend bamboo is by using bicycle wheels and clamps to bend the bamboo canes, larger bamboo canes. And in this piece called Night Song um, or Night Bloom, I have heat bent the bamboo canes into a frame to house the rest of the bamboo. Uh, I sometimes dye bamboo. So this is a five foot long dye bath and the bamboo can be dyed black, yellow, and red. Uh, this is a, one of the pieces that has been dyed red before it was split into pieces. Um, I also work with glass and um, I am my mother's child. And there's two ways I work with it. I make something called frit wafers, which is made out of crushed glass. And these are frit wafers that are turned into flowers. And these are frit wafers that are incorporated into one of my pieces of artwork. So all of this is glass and bamboo. The other thing I'll do is I'll cut up sheet glass and high fire it and it becomes these orbs and I'll sew those in with the bamboo. Before I um, am 
done and shipping work off, I treat it with Boracare, which is a borate, a borate solution. Um, and then, so this is some stacking, pieces that are done with stacking. This is called Arc of Light. And I was playing with the idea that when you have these cross cuts, light comes through the other side. And when there's light behind this, it really looks like a golden arc. I cross cut O-rings. So this is where I'm using a bandsaw and creating little cookie slices of bamboo. And this is a teapot I made for a sh invitational show that had the theme of tea. And it's cross cut bamboo and hand cast paper um, glass and then I knotless netted with a stitch the whole thing together. Split bamboo spiraling. Um, so this is that split bamboo spiraling and this one's actually double dyed. So I dyed this red, the split, I dyed the bamboo canes red and then split it all and then dyed all the bamboo yellow before I heat bent and sewed this together. Hidden is another spiraling. So I've taken the spiral form and I've pushed it on its side so that it becomes more like a, a conch shell. Coil built stitching is where I'll take tiny little pieces of bamboo and sew them on together into a long rope and then coil it as I'm stitching. And this is Venus Iris. It's made to look like a creature under the sea. Stacking within a heat bent frame. So when I began stacking, I was originally using long straight pieces of bamboo, but once I realized I could split it and get a flat plane out of it, I started to glue those split pieces together um, on frames that I had made um, in order to get these frames that had a nice curve to give them that I could stack inside of. This is springtime dance. So um, sort of referencing flowers dancing. And this piece um, in the heat bent frame is uh, called Speaking From Below. And in it, I was trying to talk about how the earth speaks to us. And the, the history of the earth is sort of under the ground. Feathering is another um, technique that I developed in grad school. And what I do here is I take heat bent pieces of bamboo, drill holes in it, and then insert a lot of split pieces and tie it all together. Here's another feathered piece called Queen of the Night. And it's about um, two and a half by two and a half feet across. So projects that I've done, um, this is from the spiraling series. It's called Helix Oculi. And um, there's a couple different bodies of work I have. This is sort of the beginning of what I'm now calling my cloud watching series. And in it, I'm trying to push and push and push the way in which I'm using my spiraling technique to create more and more complex forms. This is about nine feet long and it's got hundreds of pieces of glass incorporated into it. Spirapenna is another version of this um, spiraling technique, but in it I'm using those frit wafers to give it this very earthy from the earth feel. This is made out of uh, Phyllostachys nigra bori bamboo, which is um, a bamboo that is starting to flower here. Um, it's been reported. And this is also from the cloud series. This is um, getting more complex where I'm taking six spirals and I'm creating a bridge between each of the spirals. And this is my newest piece from the cloud watching series where I've decided to sew all the spirals together and then play around with this long strand of spiral to try and figure out how to get the two ends to connect together, kind of like a Mobius, but different. Another type of body of work that I do is narrative work. Um, 
I, as a child, I loved stories, especially myths and fairy tales. And so I've always got like a, a narrative in the back of my head when I'm working on a piece like this, I'm um, pulling from, I'm pulling in, uh, inspiration from the landscape and from archeological artifacts and from stories that I've heard. So this is um, about a journey across the sea to land. And the boat is the boat is made out of glass, and then the land has like grass coming off of it that one would have to um, walk through over a mountain. And this is a um, boat for the sun. Um, the sun journeys across the sky, and what sort of thing does it journey in but a boat? Um, can someone please mute whoever has their um, their mic on? This is Milioculus, and it's sort of a cross between a diatom, which is a microscopic um, skeleton from the ocean, and the all-seeing eye, and a bird. So this is split bamboo fused glass the center of this is glass and it's like a um, convex lens that reflects um, the other side of the lens candasar is a wall piece it's made to be like a starfish or the sun and this also from the stacking series a narrative piece about birds, I started thinking about birds when they sleep. Um, this is a more recent piece, probably the most recent narrative piece that I've done. And it is a boat journeying. Um, I was thinking about what a strange journey we've been on over the last two years and how we're all in that same boat together. There's a close up. There's little oars here that I've made out of paper and they all have a gold leaf uh, line. And this is called um, Keeper of the Oars. Um, this is a piece that I made about COVID and um, the experience of so many people crossing over to the other side and how we all have um, a paddle in the water and are paddling and at some point we have to lay our paddle down and um, the keeper of the paddles is, um, is who keeps our life. Um, this is called Serpenzunda. So it is a, um, it's one of my feather pieces but I started to think about those feathering things as ocean waves and started exploring water within that. Um, and then I decided to see if they could fly. So this is a project that I did about uh, four years ago called Volantium Colorum, which means flying colors. I had this image in my head of colors flying. And so um, these are three of them and they cast some pretty cool shadows. And this is the piece installed in a gallery up north from where I live in a town called Astoria. And there's 13 of these flying wings of color, this cloud of color. Um, this is one of those pieces installed in a client's home. They just wanted one. They only had space for one and they had this really nice white space into which it could fly. Um, I'm going to talk about work that's placed in homes now. And um, this is a commission that I did for um, a patron who wanted a piece that looked like honey. So I did a lot of research and found out how I could make glass look like honey. And here it is installed in the home and um, it's called Meladum, which is Latin for wave of honey. Um, one of the things I love about this work is that it casts a shadow on the wall. And so I encourage people to um, install them a little bit away from the wall. So they have that added shadow. 
This piece is six feet by eight feet, and it um, it is uh, a um, a bunch of flowers that all hang together on a wall. And what ended up happening is that people wanted one flower at a time, so that the flowers all ended up in different people's homes. And uh, it's made out of the same shape done over and over and over. This is a piece that was commissioned for a floating hotel, um, a high-end yacht. And each of these went into um, a suite in the floating hotel. Um, the hotel's out of Amsterdam and uh, will be setting sail in uh, September. I had a commission where somebody wanted to have a piece made to celebrate their family and the children within their family and honor them. And so these are the sketches that I did for that. And this is the piece. So the center of the piece are the parents and then the, um, the past and the future children of that family. And here's one of the brand new babies with the piece, which is behind plexiglass because they have tiny little fingers and um, the piece installed in the house. This is a spiral that's installed in, um, in River Sea Hotel here in uh, Portland, Oregon. It's about 10 feet tall spirals and is made out of Sasa Pomata Nebulosa, which is a bamboo that has like canes that are about as big around as a finger and they heat bend wonderfully. And it, it has the same sort of skin as uh, Phyllostachys nigra bori, speckled. This is an ocean wave piece, but I was sort of thinking about music at the same time. And um, this piece is nine feet long and two and a half feet wide. And I made it several years ago and it was in my studio for a while. And then it found the perfect home at the Oregon State Treasury. Um, they have a new building. And so this is what the office workers get to look at when they're working. Um, they chose it partially because it was really lightweight and so there wasn't a whole lot of modifications that they had to do for the architecture um, in order to have such a large piece in their space uh, this is one of my newest um, commissions that i did for a private home down in sonoma valley california it's a part of the country where wine is made and um, the whole pretty much the whole area burned to the ground um, quite a few years ago. And so now people are rebuilding their homes. And this is what was chosen by the owner. Um, he wanted something made out of bamboo and found me. He liked my feather series and he said, here's your budget. Do whatever you want. And which is astonishing. It's so wonderful to be able to use my own voice um, freely in order to make something, that's what I'm used to. And so um, these are called uh, Ventus Convallis, which means wind of the valley. This was an area that's in a valley and it's two pieces, a, 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 the main piece and then what he called a satellite piece is over the television. Here's a close up of the stitching. And then at night, it casts this really dramatic shadow. So here's the shadow of the main piece. And then here's the shadow of the satellite piece. And I do think each of them could have stood on their own. And this is my last little set of slides. Um, this is um, a, a piece that I called Cloud of Shells. And um, the person who um, employed me to make it liked my helix oculi piece that I had done, but he kind of, he said, can you do it nine feet long? And I thought, can I, can I do it nine feet long? And so um, after some research, um, I figured out the right structure for the armature of it. He wanted a, um, 
the top of the piece to be solid and the bottom of the piece to be open. Um, if you look in the background, you can see that it casts a shadow on the walls, which was a really great surprise. And this is the main uh, structure. On the left is the, um, the piece. And then on the right is a detail of where the piece um, goes from solid to sort of the lacy structure and the detail of how I made it transition from one to the other. Uh, this is it installed. And um, I don't have a final detail. Uh, this is where the um, they were using a scaffolding to get it up into the space. It's really a gorgeous space. I love I love the architecture of that place. And one more thing that I'm going to show you is a tour of my studio. And um, so this was last year. I'm going to turn the sound off so you can hear me instead. Uh, this is one of the other pieces that are from my cloud series. It is three bamboo spirals that are sort of weaving together. Um, you'll also see in the background here, these which are called Wisp. And then there's some of the Volantium Colorum series. So the ceiling is my storage space. Uh, and, uh, uh, Carissa, just to interrupt you, uh, we couldn't see the screen. It is It is stopped actually with the last one. It did? Okay. Let me, let me that. yeah, let me fix that. I'm going to stop sharing and then I'll restart and choose that to share. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay, do over. Um, so this is a tour of my studio and I took this um, video last year uh, when it was just chock full of a lot of different things happening all at once. Um, on the left here, you see a spiral um, that I created for the Japanese garden. It hung in trees for several years. And up in the ceiling are a lot of pieces. It's where I store things. Um, and this is another piece from the cloud series called De Capo. And it's three spirals that are sewn together. And... Down here on this table are a bunch of samples. I, I travel to teach, and then I also teach here in my studio. And these are samples from both um, here in Oregon and then also in Japan. When I went over to Japan, I was gifted a lot of bamboo samples there too. It was incredible, just an incredible experience. So some smoked bamboo, um, bamboo rhizome, and then here are um, treat surface treatments, different ways to drill and cut holes into the bamboo, different ways to tie and sew the bamboo together, um, heat bending samples, ways to peg the bamboo together, and then um, ways to use glass and bamboo and thread together to create textures. Um, and then these are two samples from classes that I've taught and will also be teaching again in the future. One is called the bamboo and glass vessel. And that's what this one is back here. It uses paper, bamboo, thread, and glass to create a skeletal structure on which to put pieces. I'm, I'm teaching that class in November. And then the other um, one is a bamboo bag basket that I created and um, the, the class actually was canceled. The not enough people showed up, but here's a desk where um, I do some paperwork and some of my flower inventory, um, lamp prototypes. And then here, these are um, molds that I use for heat bending. The bicycle wheels are heat bending molds to bend bamboo canes. And then the wooden molds are molds that I use for um, bending, um, laminating bamboo to make frames out of. A drill press, 
the area where I make tea. And then this is my glass working kiln where I fire things. And to the left of that, you see all these jars. And those are jars filled with crushed glass that I can make my frit wafers with. I have a stove in my studio to be able to bake the bamboo, a bunch of um, molds. And then this is the area of the studio where things get really dusty. Um, I have a drill press, a bandsaw with a bandsaw blade that has um, 14 teeth per inch. It's a really makes a really fine cut and a drill press and a belt sander. And that's what I get by with. One tool that I'm hoping to buy is these are these are old, these are some um, in progress pieces. So pieces that are sort of half done and awaiting the next stitching steps. Um, one of the tools that I'm still on the outlook for is um, a automated bamboo splitters or automated bamboo machines that can split the skin away from the inside while still retaining the node. Um, that's my next big buy probably. And then um, these shelves contain a lot of materials from either past pieces or scraps that I'm going to use for future pieces. Um, they contain arch architectural um, elements or samples. And this is my bamboo storage area. It changes drastically. I run through a lot of bamboo. Um, and then these are pieces. The one in the back, the orange one is very old. It's from like 2001. And there's a platter over here. This is another teaching sample where my mouse is. This piece is called um, Featherback. It's about a dancer. And I do some jewelry just with stones and thread. Uh, this piece right there is um, called Across the Sky. It's another boat for the sun. My bamboo's right out the window there. I grow bamboo in my backyard. And then little cups and trays that I sell for, you know, five or ten dollars a piece. And this is that big commission that I was working on. Um, when it was in my studio, you can sort of get a 3D view of it, walk around it a little bit. And then lastly, this is my area where I split bamboo. And this is the area where, <laughs> could, could someone mute, mute him, please? Um, this is the area where I split bamboo and um, have the setup. So this is about um, one, two, three, four, five. This is about a thousand split pieces of bamboo that were hand split and awaiting their next um, adventure. So that is all of the slides that I have. And um, Uh, do we do questions now or do we do questions after the next presenter? We'll take the questions now only. Okay, all right. Before that, it was really amazing, you know, the kind of tour you have taken us. It's like I went into a dream world and coming back now. <laughs> so <laughs> all your art was so amazing. And then I think Very you inspired right. everything in the earth, starting from uh, earth, I mean, the ground to the sky and also you want to depict uh, inside of the earth like the core of the earth also through your art piece so something which is very amazing so many uh, new things which i really uh, appreciate is that you know the kind of title you give for each art pieces that's beautiful cloud of shelter sea to land and it's so simple but 
uh, most of the time what happens is that when you walk around or when you experience something, you always have it only in your memory. But the best part, what you do is you take it and then you depict in terms of material, like, you know, in terms of your art piece so that everybody can enjoy and that they can connect with their memories. So that's so amazing, beautiful. And the kind of technique which you were explaining about the dyeing and the kind of missionaries you have in your studio. Again, studio is something I, I think it's a blessing. Uh, most of them, they don't get this opportunity to hold a studio and then work. And then I think you have taken a lot of effort in developing it and then doing amazing work. Very inspiring, very inspiring. I, I, I guess I, uh, I'm right in one way or the other. I feel like most of the audience will be thinking the same way. But I appreciate if any of the audience want to share anything with uh, Ms. Karissa, please welcome. Uh, I, I can't see any questions in the chat box, but you are most welcome if you can just use a chat box, uh, you know, the hands uh, uh, raise hand option so that we can actually invite you to ask question directly to Karissa. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was- I think they're so mesmerized. Uh, I think Radhika, they're so mesmerized with all the works that Karissa has shown. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We have never seen such delicate and nice work uh, with bamboo in our lives until now. And I think it's really, truly, truly amazing. Uh, you know, yeah. I just have one small query. Do you have some particular species of bamboo uh, you use or uh, you, whatever bamboo is available, you are doing your artwork with that? So I really love using Phyllostachys nigra and Phyllostachys nigra bori. Those are both uh, bamboos that have a very dark outside and then when you split it the inside's very white so there's this great contrast they're also they're really easy to split like to me it, they feel like and I don't know if you have tropical bamboos there but these are cold hardy black bamboos um, however they're going to flower and so you know what happens when bamboo flowers it dies and so I'm going to have to like look for new species to work with. And then um, I, I feel like when I'm talking to students, I say there's no, there's no bamboo that's bad to make things with. It's what can this bamboo do? It's not, um, there's no limit really. Yeah. Um, excuse me? Yes. Um, hello, ma'am. This is uh, architect Nishita from Surat, Gujarat. Yeah. And uh, I just want to ask you one question that what is the life long of these pieces which you have made? So how long does it stay? Uh, how long does it take to no. make? Yeah, suppose, oh. you have a, suppose you have made a piece. Okay. So I have kept it in the house. So what is the longevity of that piece? Like for five years, does it stay the same or we need to maintain it or we need to recolor it or what techniques do we need to apply or it just stays? What is the maintenance of the pieces? I understand. So um, the longevity of the piece uh, depends on how someone cares for it. If someone was to put something like this outside, okay. it would be gone within say five or 10 years, it would fall apart. These pieces are meant to be indoor. Um, they're meant to be cared for by not putting like in front of a window with really harsh sunlight. They need to be protected as you would protect a piece of textile or a fine painting. Um, there's, um, there are bamboo baskets in Japan that are centuries old. So I do think that as long as these are taken well care of, they will last as long as any painting would that's in a museum. Okay, um, thank you, ma'am. And another question is that what is the method which you use to remove the moisture from the bamboo? The material that I'm using to remove? Um, I'm not using any material to remove the moisture. When I split the bamboo, the, the split pieces dry out really quickly, like within a week. Okay. A, bamboo, a bamboo cane, if I leave the branches on, then the leaves drink the water out of the bamboo and it dries a lot more quickly. Um, but if I'm going to use like a whole bamboo cane in a piece and I 
want to make sure that it's a stable piece, I would let it dry for a couple years and expose it to a variety of temperatures. I mean, you can have a, I've had bamboo sitting in my studio for a year and it, it goes hot, cold, hot, cold. And then one day it's just one degree hotter and crack. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it splits apart all by itself. It's take a lot of hard work of yours to just make a single piece of bamboo. That's remarkable. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yes, the next person, Murli Dharan, I think is right. We have a Murli, uh, Murli Dharan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, my question is, um, uh, most of your installations must have been done in uh, 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 non-tropical, I mean, temperate conditions. Uh, we have a problem in uh, uh, the tropics that uh, uh, spiders uh, spin webs. Uh, the cobwebs uh, uh, often uh, get into the installations. Uh, what would you suggest is a, a way of avoiding this? And the second question is, uh, uh, I don't know whether it has been mentioned, uh, what kind of uh, preservative treatments uh, do you prefer? Uh, any traditional methods or do you go for uh, uh, chemicals? Um, so I think I'll answer the bamboo preservation question first. Um, there's a man named uh, Walter Lisi, which made a who wrote a book called the Bamboo Re Preservation Condendum that the American Bamboo Society sells. And there was a lot of research that went into that book. Um, but the method that I like to use is to take the bamboo and hold it over a propane burner and rotate it. And the oil comes to the surface and I wipe down the oil. Um, that's not practical for large, large things like outdoor structures and stuff, but for something that is very finely made, um, it works. And then the second step that I do is to use boric hair, which is a borate, it's an insecticide, and I mix it five parts water, one part boric hair, and I spray it on every piece before it leaves my studio. And that is a preventative care. Um, there are two traditional Japanese um, preservation techniques that I don't do because I don't know enough about, but I know they're highly effective. And one of them is to use um, kakishibu, which is a fermented persimmon juice that can be painted on bamboo. It's also used as a fabric dye and as um, a shellac to create water resistance on paper. And so I've used that on some of my bamboo pieces, but the older the, um, the bamboo gets, the more of a reddish color it turns. And I don't want my work to turn red when it leaves my studio. I want it to stay the color that it is. And then another technique is um, to use lacquer, the, um, the type of lacquer that they use, which is made out of a tree sap, like a sumac tree sap. And that tree sap actually acts like poison ivy on your skin, which is like this poison that causes a lot of itching. And so I am not willing to explore that because I don't want to end up itching all over, but it's supposed to be a really great preservative. And as for the spiders, I can't tell you because we don't have that here, but um, I will say that nature happens and it's really hard to stop what um, nature really wants to have naturally happen. Oh, thank you. But um, I think uh, some of your very fine uh, sculptures would uh, soon be uh, engulfed in uh, cobwebs if it were in uh, India or any of the tropic, humid tropics. Uh, uh, I was wondering if you had a method to prevent that. Uh, uh, it's a difficult thing, I admit. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, one thing that I do with some of my smaller works is I 
I have a board that I mount them on, and then I create a plexiglass or plastic cover that goes over the top of them. So they're sealed inside of plastic, basically a, a plastic display case. So that's the only thing I could think of that would stop something like that. But then perhaps you would have spider webs on your plastic frame. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, when we have an art piece, we uh, generally try to uh, take care. So I think uh, so. Be, yes, as you said, maybe instead of uh, uh, plexiglass or something, there can be glass also. It can be framed in a glass, and I think it will remain as such. Uh, so that that can be a way and to probably protect. Yeah, it's more like you're protecting uh, um, your paintings and. Uh, precious artwork. So this is also an artwork. So I think one could uh, we, we would like to take care of that in that way. Yeah. There's one thing which uh, why I'm just telling this is um, when we generally have uh, some other material with which art pieces are probably made, people do try to take care of them more. But the moment it comes to bamboo, I have a feeling that I've been working for more than two decades artworks, buildings, or whatever, they think that, you know, bamboo should take care of itself, which is something I would request everyone to respect the bamboo uh, as much as they would respect all other materials and uh, uh, things made out of it. Yeah, that's my take, actually. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other question? Mama, the best part about your art pieces is that the combination of different material, the glass, the crystals, and the uh, beads also you use. I think that is also made of glass only, the beadwork, the combination yes. with other materials. So quite interesting. And Thank you. Uh, so uh, how did art influence your life? If you want to share anything about that, you've been working uh, more than a two decades, I guess. So how was it? Like, how did it influence your life? Um, could you rephrase the question? No, you've been like working uh, more than two decades, right? Creating yeah. different art pieces and you enjoy it also. So uh, in your life, how it influenced you? in the other way, like other than the professional work or whatever work you do. So in your family life or, you know, other way, how it influence the kind of work you do? Yeah, so um, I, I really feel like I have a very rich life here. I have a son who plays piano and I have a garden that um, we have, we grow tomatoes, beans, broccoli, we grow all sorts of food in our garden and the, um, and flat, we grow flowers. Um, very, it's a very rich life. I'm not just, um, detail oriented in the studio creating artwork. I'm so detail oriented, um, out growing things. Um, I really, when I'm not in the studio, and I need a moment to relax. I love going out and looking at plants close up, looking at the details within the plants and um, letting those inspire me. I'm especially interested in flowers. I think they're amazing. Um, they're uh, these beautiful small sculptures that are created to attract insects and also for us to look at. Um, I also have chickens. We have 12 chickens and um, they provide a lot of amusement. Um, and then there's so many different beautiful gardens here in the Pacific Northwest. We have the Japanese garden and it is um, one of the best um, authentic Japanese gardens in the United States. And it incorporates bamboo into the gardens and into, um, in terms of garden gates. And um, then there's the bamboo farm, bamboo nursery, bamboo garden nursery that's um, 
Oh, it's about 10, 10 miles away from me. It's about a half hour drive and it's 20 acres with 300 varieties. And it's where I go also to get inspiration. Going into a bamboo grove gives me ideas. Brilliant. That, that could showcase that each and every work you do, you take inspiration from that and then you love to do whatever you do, right? So that's amazing. And I could see that you, you are taking the legacy of your mother also. So though you have your own style of working, but you keep adding the, uh, the experience or the thing which you learn from your mother. So that's also an amazing thing. So I, I don't think not everybody will do that. So all the very best for your future, um, you know, whatever works you're going to take up. And I, I'm, I'm sure that you will be getting more and more works, uh, the, the kind of artwork you do. So, um, so with this, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, I think I have a question. Yes, I'll sir. add one word. And yeah, because I think uh, maybe Kadisha maybe uh, is very late for her. So yeah. she may not stay for the whole uh, webinar. So Kadisha, I'm really so thankful. And I'm telling you, I really feel, I don't know when I can come and uh, mm -hmm. uh, see your work or even learn from you. Uh, uh, I When I look at these kind of things, and especially with bamboo, I'm like a child uh, ready to absorb everything. So maybe I oh. don't know how it may be organized, if as and when uh, we could have you over in India and to conduct a workshop. I'm just hoping that we will be able to do that. So. Oh, with Wonderful. Well, yeah, let me know when you're flying into Portland, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. Have you here. <laughs> yeah, Thank sure, you. Sure, sure. Yeah, Listen, yeah, we have an you know, audience from yeah, different so backgrounds, so any message you want to share with them, uh, you know, the person who's really uh, wanted to start up with this kind of artwork, so what kind of um, ideas or tips you want to give it to them? Um, so I think that the best thing to do is to get your hands on a bunch of tools and some bamboo and just try and take it apart and really examine what happens when I do this with the bamboo. What happens when I cut the bamboo with this tool? What happens when I burn the bamboo? What happens when I... Um, when I drill into it. And then after you've, that's what I did. I approached it with a, what happens if I do this attitude, which is sort of a scientific approach that you can take to it. So I would suggest to start there and look around you at the, what plants do naturally and try to emanate what they do naturally. Yeah, rightly said. Great. Yeah, yeah. Listen to your heart. Oh, yes. Listen to your heart <laughs> through your hand. Oh, Try to understand way. the material, and then you can explore whatever you want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So thank you, yeah, Ms. Katsu, you. for the wonderful presentation. Uh, yes, uh, we are very grateful for the time and effort you took to share your thoughts and experience with us. It was an amazing feeling after your presentation. Uh, as I told you, it's like we enter into a dream world and feeling that. So, <laughs> but we'll keep all your, uh, <laughs> yes, interesting things uh, in our memory and then we'll try to explore more on it. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Nice, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gadisha. So audience, please stay tuned with us. We have one more uh, interesting guest speaker over here. And uh, so I'm going to talk about something like about the creativity as you are seeing, like we just saw a lot of art pieces. So creativity actually makes life infinitely interesting and fulfilling. It's about uh, living life as a journey into seeing and communicating the extraordinances of the simplest most everyday acts. That's what even Ms. Carissa was explaining how she inspired each and everything. So we are going to meet an architect uh, come industrial designer uh, who expresses creativity in everyday life through his beautiful products. So he creates immediate surroundings as a beautiful or eccentric by experimenting with a sense of color, texture and line, which creates an element of surprise to any space. 
So now I'm going to introduce our second speaker of the day, Mr. Shashan Gautam. He is the founder and design director of Mianzi. With a drive to build sustainable products that can revive our heritage and vanishing craftsmanship, Shashan Gautam, with a bachelor's in architecture from SPA Delhi and master's in industrial designing from IDC IIT Bombay, established Mianzi. Mianzi, Mianzi, okay. So it uh, actually ref revolutionizes the way bamboo is seen and used by bringing carefully crafted bamboo built options in furniture, lifestyle products, bicycle and architecture that make your home look woke and don't uh, detriment the health of the planet. So that's very important. Shashan believes that sustainability being associated with going without is always be titled. So he came up with products that attain both competitive edge for similar wood plastic based products uh, whilst reaping, uh, reaping benefits for the environment. The hands-on experience he gained at his grandfather's cycle rickshaw rent and repair shop inspired him to work out simple but efficient solutions that are very unique. After working in a few industrial design companies as a lead designer, where they used to design with industrialized material like plastic, metal, etc., used mostly in home appliances and lighting products, he decided to create something useful, unique, but essentially earth friendly. Inspired and humbled by the artisans he met while researching bamboo, he felt the need to support the artisans and the age old manufacturing practices. With its roots set in Indian traditions and history, Bamboo is a raw material which can be handcrafted and has a strong potential to the broad, uh, which need to be forward on industrial scale as well. Additionally, it is a sustainable yet robust and flexible material. And uh, it has been in Philippines design philosophy in many ways. And it is often reflected as a polygamy between sustainability, contemporary aesthetics and cultural heritage. So it's wonderful to see both the speakers, they have those roots, you know, with their uh, either family members or their own uh, parents. So over to you, uh, Mr. Shashan Gautam. We are really waiting to see your presentation. Thank you, Radhika, for such an awesome introduction of mine. And I'm being honored here to present in front of you all. So let's start with the presentation. Uh, Yes, is my screen visible to you? Yes, it is visible. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so, uh, so I'm an architect and I'm an also an industrial designer. So, um, so when I was doing my architecture in 2009, when I was in third year, so there was a design competition that was uh, organized by IGBC, Indian Green Building Council. And that competition, you know, that was turned into a class submission by the faculties uh, at SPA. So we had to have participate in this competition. So, and, and the brief of the competition was to design a zero carbon footprint tree house. So uh, we thought that why can't we make something out of, you know, bamboo? Uh, so so uh, what we did was we took a living bamboo cluster and, uh, you know, I compressed uh, the, uh, the members which are at the periphery and uh, the members which are in the center, they are in tension. So thus by getting a, you know, space in between in this image, you can see there's a space where you can stay so in in northeast you know you'll get um, a bamboo cluster uh, of a height of 40 or 45 feet so yeah so you can you can change the space to make it a habitable and maybe people can stay and fortunately you know uh, we won that award in 2009 and uh, Rasaya sir was the chief minister that time at Andhra Pradesh. So I was honored to receive an award from him in 2009. Uh, so after, you know, studying architecture, I worked as an architect and, uh, and, you know, I was also really, very passionate about bicycle as well. 
Uh, so mm-hmm. I thought of making a bicycle, which will which will be you know used to commute from the place I stay to my office. So I just went to a junkyard and uh, take some uh, took out some you know scrap uh, bicycle frames, and I replaced few of the few of the members with bamboo. And I really loved the geared bicycle, so I made it. Uh, I turned it into a geared one. So this was the bicycle I made in 2013, I believe. And then later, I found uh, my interest, you know, uh, onto making uh, products and objects. So I went to IDC IIT Bombay. Then again, I took uh, the bicycle project, which can be, you know, mass manufactured. Uh, as a as a P two project there, and uh, I made this this bicycle. So I realized that you know to mass manufacture anything uh, which is related to natural natural material, you have to standardize it. So yeah, so the sections that we are seeing is is a thirty two mm uh, circular section of bamboo. So I had to standardize by maintaining the you know the the circumference of it or the diameter of it. Uh, to the material which is available in the market. So mm-hmm. you can see the joineries here uh, made out of metal, which is also 32 mm dia, uh, inside which the bamboo is inserted. So yeah, so again, then I was not really very satisfied with the with the kind of industrialization that can this bicycle design can do. So mm-hmm. I was I was still working on uh, bicycle. I'll, I'll show you to you later what all work I have done uh, in my uh, in my further presenting presentation and uh, also this this chair the, the name of this chair is the butterfly chair and uh, uh, I worked I started working upon it during my internship period when I was doing my internship at Urvu in Vainat Kerala so they had a they had few problems with the furniture, with their existing furniture that's there in their resort. So I started with the chair and I took uh, and I, you know, started from a scratch uh, for designing the chair. And and this was the result of that internship. It took me like three whole months to uh, come up with the prototype of this chair. So this is how I, these are the legs and uh, I used uh, 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 claim bending as you already know how to uh, bend these uh, you know rectangular sections of bamboo then i used few utensils to you know to make the backrest of it so everything was then with some kind of jugar and uh, yeah so so again that uh, chair I have reworked upon. You'll see later on the presentation. So all these, uh, the all these the works that you have seen till now, there were, there were academics. They were into academics, or uske baad, uh, uh, after you know getting placed after uh, my uh, post graduation, I worked as an industrial designer as an industrial designer in few of the renowned firms. So this. Uh, this was the set design done by me for Gaurav Gupta fashion show uh, in uh, for FDCI. So uh, where I experimented with a lot of materials. Uh, so the, you can see I have used glass over here and, and there are fabrics. So these fabrics are of uh, reinforced uh, plastic. So the the lines what you are what you are seeing in the fabric is. Uh, there's a plastic uh, wire insertion in between. So yeah, these are the few pictures of the set design I did for the fashion show. Yeah, and also I worked, um, you know, for a few industrial design companies as well, uh, where I made uh, several number of, you know, home appliances. So there's the air purifier, which I have designed and uh, the split ACs, multiple split ACs, which are there on market currently. Then there's the electric kettle. So, so I've gained, I've gained uh, a good amount of experience in, your, in, you know, in the industrial manufacturing uh, in the, for, for the materials like you know, uh, plastic, board, glass, and all. So I thought that why 
why isn't bamboo is so popular why why aren't we taking this as a material you know to explore and why can't we make something out of it which is you know equally uh, comparable with uh, the, the products that are available in market which is made up of let's say plastic wood or metal or something so that was a question which was run, uh, running uh, behind my mind uh, every time uh, and since i was you know I, i did a lot of work in bamboo previously in my academics i had a i had a you know feeling um and kind of love with this material so so to answer that question you know i i started meanzi in 2019 and uh, and you know just to come up with uh, the products made out of bamboo there are i i realized that there are few parameters which i need to address uh in a very in a very you know significant significant way so these are the parameters uh, which i which we have you know intensively worked upon so the first one is design manufacturing marketing and logistics so you know to come up with designs made out of bamboo matlab india mein already uh, bamboo का एक बहुत ही मतलब खराब नोशन है इंडिया में मतलब जैसे कि लेट्स लेट्स से इफ वी आर इमेजिनिंग प्रोडक्ट्स आउट ऑफ बैम्बू तो हमें ऐसे ही प्रोडक्ट्स सोचने को मिलते हैं विच इज विच यू नो जो रोड साइड के आसपास मिलते थे विच डू विच डू नॉट हैव एनी काइंड ऑफ यू नो डिजाइन क्वालिटी और which is not at all comparable with you know the current प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर अवेलेबल इन मार्केट तो द डिजाइन हैज टू बी रियली वेरी डिफरेंट आई रियलाइज कि मतलब ये ये सिचुएशन को पूरा पलटना होगा तो डिजाइन हैज टू प्ले अ रियली वेरी गुड रोल इफ वी आर मेकिंग प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ बैम्बू सो सो या सो सो वी हैव टू मेक पीसेस विच यू नो विच गोज to the current scenario to the current space to the current co- contemporary colors and the texture that's available uh, in you know a typical uh, interior to uske sath merge hona chahiye aisa nahi lagna chahiye ki matlab bilkul hi alien product aa gaya hai hamare space mein so that uh, we realize and also the colors and all ki uh, कलर्स भी मैच होने चाहिए या कलर्स इस इंटीरियर के साथ जाना चाहिए स्पेस किस तरह मतलब ऑब्जेक्ट्स विच इज विच विच हैज कैप्ट ऑन टू द सराउंडिंग्स ऑफ द स्पेस वो सारा कुछ एक दूसरे से बातें करनी चाहिए तो मतलब ऐसा बिल्कुल भी नहीं लगना चाहिए कि कोई एक अलग सी चीज हमारे स्पेसेस uh, में आके आ गई है एंड अगेन इट हैज टू बी यूटेलिटेरियन एस्थेटिक्स के साथ साथ so yes uh, it has to be the product has to be trendy uh, if i'm coming up with you know uh, products which is made out of bamboo or jo matlab kafi traditionally jo pehle se kafi log use kar rahe the yeah so so this is about the scale the uh, you know the sofa sets and all that you are seeing that matlab at least ye does the suite ke size ke honge and in that scale we have prototyped a bamboo uh, pendant lamp which uh, the diameter of this lamp is about like 8 to 9 feet jo upar se hang hota hai yeah and the other main important thing what i realized is is ki uh, design bahut hi unconventional hona chahiye so the butterfly chair what you have seen uh, previously uh, तो उस पर काफी सारे इम्प्रूवमेंट्स uh, मैंने किए एंड uh, इसमें आपको दिख रहा होगा कितने सारे इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड दिस कैन बी यू नो फ्लैट पैक इन इन अ रियली वेरी स्मॉल बॉक्स यू नो टू टू यू नो टू टू मेक टू टू मेक इजली अवेलेबल फॉर फॉर ग्लोबल कंट्रीज so so this so this is a super ball bot uh, which is being currently experimented by nasa you know to deploy uh, uh, mobility to other planets so the same the same uh, concept has been and even 
the same con concept has been used in this uh, suspension bridge as well. So uh, working on these tensegrity structured, I've also, you know, designed uh, this uh, electric bicycle. So again, by my urge of, you know, uh, making mass manufactured electric, uh, mass manufactured, uh, you know, a bamboo bicycle who come huani and I, I, you know, I experimented a lot in this and currently I have, come, uh, we have come up with this prototype and uh, uh, I guess this is the first electric bicycle, uh, bamboo bicycle in the world uh, and I'm currently using it. So uh, currently we are figuring out the production of it uh, or is may or koi aisa zyada matlab kuch aisa problems mujhe abhi tak to face karne ko nahi mila i have been using this bicycle for since like 2 years or something uh yes so it has to be the product has to be you know unconventional in all aspects the next version of this bicycle would be the battery will go inside you know will house inside the inside the pole the cap uh, we usually have a you know hole inside bamboo so the battery or circuits go the circuits and all what you're seeing here is already being housed in this uh, in this uh, prototype what we have made but the next version my battery will also go inside yeah and also we are doing few projects in architecture as well so this this project is happening in makai Badi, if you have heard of in karsiong uh, north bengal so uh, we are coming up with uh, this design so this is a free experience center uh, right at the middle of a tea state in karsiong uh, so what i felt was while doing architecture it has to be you know uh, the aesthetic should be uh, say, conventional architecture just a nahi hona chahiye, what I feel, uh, thoda futuristic dikhna chahiye. So that's how we came up with these uh, designs. So there's another concept uh, which is happening again in Karsiyong. Yeah. And uh, what I usually, what we usually do is um, Matlab, we integrate a lot of you know different materials with bamboo so in this particular uh, picture you are seeing uh, cork is being used as the as a base of these straight so so uh as a feel nahi hota ki koi alag material ko agar hum log integrate kare to matlab kuch harm hai matlab because because all materials have their have their certain properties and i think uh, we should respect uh, uh, them uh, according to the properties what they carry so us tarah se matlab un properties ko carry karte hue we integrate materials with you know with bamboo but bamboo ko primary materials generally so in this uh, one you can see how we have used uh, uh, this metal brass okay and also there's a glass ball uh, at the bottom so this particular piece is called the firefly lamp and uh, this is the uh, modular wardrobe system that we have designed and so it's my khas baat hai ki you can stay you can you know uh, change the orientation of these cubicles and maybe you can add cells into it or maybe you can remove it uh, it, it changes, you know, according uh, to the space uh, that you have. So uh, this, these all, this all wardrobe can be, you know, uh, totally change into, uh, uh, you know, just may kapde rakte hain, or let's say a bookshelf if you want to keep, or let's say a wardrobe that uh, that uh, we can use in kitchen for keeping utensils and or a bar con or, or uh, you know keep objects for the bar as well. Yeah, uh, so it's my material integration. What we have done is uh, we have used MS sections to, you know, to house these uh, modules into it. Uh, and again, these MS sections can be, you know, dismantled and can be flat packed in a really very small box. So this is uh, one of the projects we did for both the properties uh, in Pune. Uh, 
yeah there's a customized version of uh, the high modular system yeah we do a lot of you know engineering as well uh, to each of our design so uh, the current uh, picture that you are seeing is the lotus tool this weighs like around 2.5 kgs and can take up to 250 kgs of load and yeah as you as i have already said it's pretty it's very lightweight very lighter and the and the sections that we are seeing here the bamboo sections we are seeing here is of 8 mm just 8 mm sections we are using uh, to make this kind of piece and uh, we try to avoid you know a lot of uh, joinery details hum log try karte hain ki nut and bolt se hi join ho jaye aur ek ek matlab ek single part of a piece मतलब एक खुद के अंदर एक पार्ट रहता है वो जॉइन किसी मतलब बहुत कम जॉइनरीज हम लोग यूज करते हैं किसी भी पार्ट में ये करने के लिए यूजुअली ट्राई टू नट एंड बोल्ड एवरीथिंग सो सो यस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग आल्सो प्लेज अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट रोल बिकॉज यू नो यू नो अभी जो इस टाइम पे इंडस्ट्रियल फेस चल रहा है एंड यू नो देर देर आर लॉट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट दैट इज अवेलेबल इन मार्केट जो बहुत ही अच्छे क्वालिटी के आपको प्रोडक्ट मिल रहे होंगे इन प्लास्टिक और फूड तो वी हैव टू यू नो कोप अपथ दिस मटीरियल एज वेल मतलब इस मटीरियल में आई डोंट थिंक सम काइंड ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी दैट हैज बिन डेवलप इन स्टेजेस तो so we have to come up with you know new technologies and all so all all our design you know conceived is i'll just play a video here if it runs so first uh, that's how we conceive uh, you know uh, an idea and uh, we try to make as modular as possible you know to flat pack everything uh, and also you know also make it really very easy to uh, assemble just get out from this तो हाँ तो दैट्स हाउ वी कंसीव एनी यू नो एनी प्रोडक्ट फिर उसके बाद वी यूज टू कैड मॉडल इट एंड देन वी यूज टू डू इंजीनियरिंग ऑफ इट ऑल्सो वी नो वी टेस्ट इट कि कितना वेट झेल पा रहा है एंड ऑल्सो वी मेक अ स्मॉलर प्रोटोटाइप वर्जन ऑफ पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट जस्ट टू चेक कि सारे स्ट्रेंथ वगैरह ट्रांजेंशियल फोर्सेस या पर्टिकुलर फोर्सेस वगैरह सब कुछ हम से एक्ट कर रहे हैं यानी uh so that kind of you know uh, engineering goes into each of our product uh and the quality what we maintain is uh is comparable to the uh, to the products that are currently you know available in the industrial market so this is the bottom of the butterfly chair एंड मतलब टॉलरेंसेस हम पॉइंट फाइव एम तक का टॉलरेंस रखते हैं अपने अपने सारे प्रोडक्ट्स में हम लोग क्वांटिटी पे ज्यादा बिलीव रखते हैं क्वांटिटी क्वालिटी पे ज्यादा बिलीव रखते हैं क्वांटिटी से कंपेयर अगर करें तो तो शुरू में हम क्वालिटी ज्यादा रखते हैं एंड देन वी यू नो देन वी डू अ लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च इन टू मैनुफैक्चरिंग एंड देन इवेंचुअली वी कम अप विथ यू नो विथ मशीन और लेट से मोल्ड जो फिर धीरे धीरे क्वांटिटी में फोकस करेगा तो फर्स्ट वी फोकस ऑन क्वालिटी देन क्वांटिटी एंड ऑफकोर्स वी ट्रीटेड विथ यू नो विथ बोरिक्स एंड बोरक्स सोल्ट एंड समटाइम्स विथ सी सी टी एज वेल इफ वी आर यूजिंग द फर्नीचर आउटडोर uh and these are a few for products that are available uh, in our website uh colors some uh, obviously use kar rahe hain uh and the colors that we are choosing are matlab according to the 
करंट ट्रेंड जो आर्किटेक्चर में करंटली चल रहा होगा या फैशन में करंटली चल रहा होगा तो दैट्स काइंड ऑफ कलर पैलेट वी यूजुअली हैव एंड दिस द पर्टिकुलर पीस दैट यू हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड हैज बीन मेड आउट ऑफ दिस मोल्ड तो अगेन ये मोल्ड में काफी हमारे इंजीनियरिंग गया हुआ है आई आई फील समटाइम्स कि मतलब द नॉलेज व्हाट आई हैड दैट आई गेन फ्रॉम व्हेन आई वाज डूइंग माय इंडस्ट्रियल डिजाइनिंग जो इंजेक्शन मोल्डिंग के जैसे फोर और कैविटी वाले मोल्ड्स uh, वगैरह बनते हैं दैट नॉलेज आई एम अप्लाइंग फॉर यू नो फॉर प्रोडक्शन ऑफ दीज बैम्बू पीसेस see all all of all of our you know uh, bamboo strips or ya yeah, bamboo ke elements matlab uh, aise place karte hain matlab mm ka bhi difference nahi hota hai uh, you can see there's a there's a printed layout there's a printed jig uh, in this uh, on the top of which uh, an artisan is working so artisans ke liye bhi ye kafi aasan ho jata hai si product ko you know uh, banana ke liye or the and Uh, we have you know the production speed has been increased by uh, by at least uh, 400 percent jo pehle products aise haath se banate the artisans yeah these are the molds that we used to bend uh, bamboo and uh, yes marketing plays uh, an important role matlab i i guess marketing to sabse zyada uh, इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल प्ले करता है प्रोडक्ट्स को मतलब ग्लोबली पहुंचाने के लिए अदर देन द डिजाइन ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट तो वी यूजुअली डू पैसिव मार्केटिंग तो व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड इन 2019 द फर्स्ट ईयर इट्स वी वॉन यू नो फ्यू अवॉर्ड्स एज यू कैन सी इन दिस साइड वी ऑल्सो गॉट इन्वाइटेड to uh, frankfurt to display in ambiance uh where they invited like 40 designers from all over the world and we were amongst one of them uh a lot of you know uh, uh publishings has been done in, uh, in these magazines uh aur iske liye hum bilkul bhi pay nahi karte hain kisi ko matlab hum log zyada zyada try karte hain apne marketing ka jo fund hai wo utilize karne ko apne research mein to marketing mein hamara funds uh bahut hi kam use hota hai yeah so these are a few exhibitions that uh, uh, these are one of the exhibition where we and displayed our products so this was in uh, frankfurt germany uh and yes we are active into social media matlab uh, social media mein rehna bahut hi zyada important hai for you know uh, to be in you know this market uh aur uh, hamara matlab hamesha hum isme uh, kafi actively involved rehte hain apne social media mein ki kya chal raha hai hamare factory mein abhi hum kis cheez pe experiment kar rahe hain so If you if you want to keep an update, you can follow our page. So it's Mianzi Global, and uh, yes, logistics also plays a, a very significant role uh, because you know we want to make our products uh, available globally. So we have flat pack. We have a lot of attention to our products. So this particular uh, piece of lamb that you are seeing can be flat pack in India. You know, a uh, really very small uh, package. so the, uh, and the height of the package is just like 50 mm uh, or 600 by 600 by 50 mm or something it can be packed in a really very small box and the butterfly chair that you have seen can be uh, can be dismantled in pieces and there's a assembly manual that goes uh, with the package uh, and uh, yeah you receive the packet like in this manner and people usually you know uh, assemble it in like 10 to 15 minutes they hardly take uh, the same co- concept goes with other furniture as well there's the mocha chair and this is how it uh, gets flat pack again this is the rat stool there's uh, one is a smaller version and one is a larger version of it 
and uh, yeah this is how it can be flat packed so all of our uh, designs so for example this floor lamp also can be flat packed so this is made out of you know two parts so upper wala part is the lamp shade and the bottom one is the stand so it goes in two boxes two slim boxes or for again uh, it can be assembled by the user in a matter of minutes the same concept goes with all this lamp so this is again the lotus lamp and one more thing we use a lot of modularity uh, uh, for all, all of our product for example if we are making a, a design uh, uh, which uses th this lotus shade okay so pendant lamp may be lotus shade lagega then uh, we come up with uh, uh floor lamps as well which can use this lotus shade or us lotus shade look matlab matlab manufacturing mein hamara zyada spend nahi ho raha hai what i mean to say so that's the reason uh, why modularity helps theek hai to to ye same lotus shade ka aapko pendant lamp mein mil jayega then floor lamp bhi mil jayega table lamp bhi mil jayega yeah this the opium these are the mirrors that we are currently producing baskets and this is uh, a current team what we are having we have a team of you know 30 people working in satna in satna madhya pradesh uh, that's it thank you thank you so much mr shashank uh, i guess your video is not on ha uh, yeah now i can see you yes. so it was a wonderful presentation i think you are your products are like starting from the smallest product to the biggest structure you're doing so how do you handle it like i know you have hold a two degree architect and also a product designer industrial designer so when you work in mianzi is it is it easy to work with the smallest product or i really wonder how do you balance both the things smallest product to the structure See, Radhika, I am I am the only designer here in Mianzi, so I handle every uh, bits of the design part and the technical technicalities of it. So uh, we started actually with building furnitures uh, initially, uh, and eventually we came up. We came to know that people. Uh, I mean, the uh, most of our revenue, most of the chunk of the revenue comes from lighting. Seventy percent of our revenue comes up with lighting. Okay, so and since uh, we started like uh, when the COVID was there uh, in two thousand nine, मतलब वो starting था almost at nineteen uh, COVID के time का. So uh, and the all uh, and all online market was the only go to you know thing जहाँ पे हम लोग अपने product बेच सकते थे. So people do not you know uh, uh, trust. जब वो फर्नीचर खरीदने जाते हैं दे हैव टू हैव सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो फिजिकल फीलिंग और वो फिजिकली वो देखना चाहते हैं तो फर्नीचर में शायद इस रीजन से वी वेर नॉट यू नो एक्सप्लोरिंग और स्केलिंग अप इन दैट पे पर तो छोटे प्रोडक्ट जैसे कि आपने बोला तो छोटे प्रोडक्ट लाइटिंग में हमने काफी फोकस किया एंड लाइटिंग वेर सेलिंग अ लॉट ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम तो अब कोविड खुलने के बाद धीरे धीरे हम लोग फर्नीचर uh, पे भी आ रहे हैं uh, हाँ तो मतलब इट्स नॉट लाइक अबाउट द स्केल ऑलवेज वी स्टार्ट लाइक यू नो फ्रॉम अ स्मॉलर थिंग और वो धीरे धीरे वो अपने आप बड़ा होते जाता है एंड एंड वी आर डूइंग आल्सो छोटे मोटे आर्किटेक्चरल प्रोजेक्ट्स अभी कर रहे हैं हम लोग मतलब दैट्स दैट्स जस्ट द स्टार्टिंग द इमेज दैट यू दैट यू वे सींग इन द प्रेजेंटेशन दैट्स द फर्स्ट प्रोजेक्ट दैट वी करेंटली कम कमीशंट रिसेंटली मतलब ये चार पांच महीने पहले ही हमने स्टार्ट किया था ये सारे तो वी स्टार्टेड विद स्मॉल देन इट्स हैपनिंग इट्स इवेंचुअली गेटिंग आफ्टर सीइंग योर प्रेजेंटेशन वन थिंग इट केम टू माय माइंड पीपल से नो डोंट स्टॉप अंटिल योर ड्रीम्स कम ट्रू सो आई कुड सी लाइक व्हेन यू आर डूइंग योर कॉलेज लाइफ यू हैड दैट पैशन टू ब्रिंग सम प्रोडक्ट रिलेटेड टू साइकिल इनटू अ मास द थिंग प्रोड्यूस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग and finally when you started mianzi and may, you made it sure that it is workable and then that to advanced way like electric uh, bicycle you found so that's really amazing and i, I congratulate for all the awards which you won 
and uh, i think a long way to go you have a lot of potential and uh, the kind of work you are doing the concern you are having with the artisans that's really mind blowing and i feel like every uh, like product designer uh, when they put their heart and soul saying that you know it, it is not that whatever material is available you can do that products but as a person when you take the responsibility okay let me just change something you know like which is benefited uh, benefiting uh, the environment so your approach towards that so initially you started reducing the material like by replacing bamboo then you wanted to know like more about bamboo and then you started exploring yes this is the futuristic product and you explored it so that's something really uh, i think uh, most of them should learn from you and it's really uh, nice to know that you are here to explain uh, those things but this actually provokes me to start a debatable topic here uh, where we can say like you know uh, in those days we used to call bamboo as a uh, poor man steel right and now we call that as a green gold okay so uh, there are uh, some discussions happening that as soon as we give touch uh, to the bamboo uh, add more value and style and aesthetics uh, it becomes more expensive so uh, what is your opinion about that is it you are uh, taking concern about that making it economical or you want to give that uh, you know uh, elevating the money aspects also yeah see radhika so uh, our my way of you know strategizing it is uh, quite different uh, to it kaise main bata raha hu let's say let's say if i'll make a really very good design or main matlab bahut saste mein main market mein rakh people i don't think people will look at uh, ki matlab look at as a you know in a in a respectable way currently ठीक है क्योंकि बैम्बू का ऑलरेडी uh, इतना इमेज खराब हो चुका है इस मतलब बेसिकली आई गेस जब ब्रिटिशर्स जब आए थे यहाँ पे तब टिम्बर uh, काफी एक्सपोर्ट होने शुरू हो गया था उससे पहले शायद बैम्बू के काफी सारे फर्नीचर्स इंडिया में बनते थे तो वहां से शायद इसका इमेज खराब होना बहुत ज्यादा शुरू हुआ है तो माई वे ऑफ यू नो चेंजिंग द इमेज ऑफ दिस मटीरियल इज लेट्स मेक प्रोडक्ट्स आउट ऑफ बैम्बू जो कि यू नो जो एक एस्पिरेशन बनाए लोगों के लिए सो मेक इट एन मेक इट लाइक एन एस्पिरेशनल प्रोडक्ट करेंटली मतलब अभी का जो स्ट्रैटेजी होना चाहिए ठीक है फिर धीरे धीरे लोग देखेंगे कि ओके हायर क्लास इज यूजिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ यू नो ये ऐसे प्रोडक्ट चल रहा है ऐसा ट्रेंड चल रहा है तो ये तो तो मिडिल क्लास वाले लोग इनसे इंस्पायर होंगे मिडिल क्लास या लोअर मिडिल क्लास वाले लोग ये चीज से इंस्पायर होंगे देन देन और तब तक क्या होगा हमारा बैम्बू का प्रोडक्शन में जो टेक्नोलॉजी यूज हो रहा है तब तक इम्प्रूव भी हो जाएगा क्योंकि अभी मैं जो टेक्नोलॉजी यूज कर रहा हूँ वो एक्सपेंसिव है बिकॉज आई एम डूइंग आई एम डूइंग अट ऑफ आई एम पुटिंग अलॉट ऑफ मनी इन टू माई रिसर्च ठीक है कि मेकिंग यू नो डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ मोल्ड फेल हो जाते हैं फिर अलग एक डिजाइन बनाना पड़ता है मशीन बना बना रहा हूँ मैं कुछ कि मशीन में इम्प्रूवमेंट क्या होना चाहिए बिकॉज वुड का मशीन और बामू का मशीन बहुत डिफरेंट होता है वो सेम मशीन से एक जगह पे नहीं काम करते तो सो मतलब आई थिंक दैट्स द वे हाउ वी कैन लुक इन टू दिस की शुरू में थोड़ा सा एस्पिरेशनल वैल्यू क्रिएट करें फिर उसके बाद में आप मैनुफैक्चरिंग में जाए आई डू लुक इन टू यू नो दीज प्रोडक्ट एज अू नो एज एन अफोर्ड यू नो विच विल गेट फ्रॉम द मार्केट इन एन अफोर्डेबल रेट पर अभी के लिए हम नहीं कर पा रहे हैं पर आगे के लिए हम जरूर ये करेंगे कम प्राइसेस में बैम्बू because as an individual when we come to know about bamboo we just fall in love with that material and we want to do something with that but there is something which is pulling back that material to grow uh, further so i think sir is uh, mr sarshan has understood that and then he has applied his own formula for it and that's really great to know that yes ma'am over to you yeah so i'm 
I'm really I think I think uh, this was another uh, stroke of good luck that I could get Sashank uh, for the uh, webinar, and um, I'm really so happy that uh, Sashank you have you are you have shared your work and uh, it's really very inspiring, and uh, I'm hoping because this is also on the Council of Architecture uh, uh, training and research cell, it will also go on that website and on their uh, uh, portal. I'm hoping that a lot more architects and designers and interiors uh, people also will uh, get inspired with your work. And um, uh, I think that Radhika, what the question she was asking, uh, a person who is also working with, uh, you know, buildings with bamboo. So I try to do, uh, you know, not raise the, uh, what is that, your uh, cost of, you know, building, build, because I don't do products, I do buildings. Uh, but in that, when the moment you, you first, they want you to lower your cost. And then once you have done it, they start pointing out mistakes and uh, finish problems and uh, 101 things that this is not like that. This is not like this and it's not really working. So they want uh, most of the time, I'm really sorry to be very blunt about it. But there are this thing that, you know, bamboo, if it is bamboo, it should be absolutely cheap, but uh, in cost. But it should be, um, what do you say, uh, you know, uh, uh, expected to uh, perform uh, like uh, other materials where they can invest a lot of money and they can pay a lot of money. So this is what is expected uh, out of bamboo. <laughs> because They take it absolutely, oh, it's like a bamboo in the middle of the factory, it's a little produce, so it doesn't seem to do anything to do with it. And that's the kind of... Uh, attitude which people have uh, again uh, coming to processing yeah there has to be a balance as radhika was telling that uh, and as uh, sashank you were telling that you know it should the middle class people will start following but yeah the initial cost of uh, any product for that matter when it just starts it will be high and once the demand becomes more uh, and then then lot more people and then lot more jigs and uh, you know those things are uh, manufactured and they're easily available at a lesser rate and uh, designers and people can use it then process prices will slowly start falling down so that uh, is something which we have to tide over uh, as designers and as architects and people and people also have to give their support that you know they really want uh, uh, you know this kind of a work at the same time it should not go uh, completely to the standards where it makes it absolutely unaffordable for other people. Uh, that is also something a word of caution uh, because the world over, everyone is talking about build, Bali buildings of bamboo. I mean, in our case, and I've been there, I've seen the products. They are excellent products, beautiful products, but completely out of uh, uh, reach of the common man by not just small margin, the largest margin that you could ever think of. And... Um, that probably will not be doing service to bamboo, either bamboo or to people uh, who should be using articles with bamboo. I mean, the common man. So there has to be a kind of a balance uh, uh, which needs to be uh, made where we are able to, you know, uh, uh, use the material, natural materials. At the same time, it is also available for the common man to use. And as Sashank rightly said, the middle class because at least that they should be able to use. Uh, that's a, I think that's a very important point. Uh, do you see, use any particular species of bamboo, um, Sashank? Because that is something which I'm always curious. And actually, I'm very much uh, um, interested in uh, lighting fixtures design. Have not been able to have not been able to get down to it to start something. I'm just hoping that in near future I will be able to do that. <laughs> so, do you uh, use some particular species and how many years old uh, that particular bamboo is for your uh, pieces that you have made? And do you think there's something? You can unmute yourself. No? Yes, yes. No, I can. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, if I'll talk about the species, uh, Neelam, ma'am, uh, we usually use dendrochalamus uh, around the nation. Uh, 
मेकिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज प्रोडक्ट मतलब एंड मतलब हम लोग लाइक अबाउट फाइव डिफरेंट स्पीशीज से ज्यादातर काम कर रहे हैं मोस्टली डेंड्रोकुलबल इन सेंट्रल एशिया मोस्ट सेंट्रल इंडिया मोस्टली एंड uh, कुछ प्रोडक्ट्स जो वीविंग के लिए यूज होता है वो uh, हम लोग नॉर्थ ईस्ट वाले बैम्बू सोर्स करते हैं ठीक है uh, जो स्लाइवर्स हैं वो मध्य प्रदेश में अच्छे स्लाइवर्स मतलब मिलते नहीं है वो क्वालिटी के स्लाइवर्स तो वीविंग के लिए हम नॉर्थ ईस्ट के uh, वो यूज करते हैं एंड फॉर यू यू नो अलग अलग प्रोडक्ट के लिए अलग अलग स्पीशीज यूज करते हैं एंड ऑल्सो नीलम मैम अबाउट दीवियस कन्वर्सेशन दैट वी आर 